Brad Rosley. Thanks for tuning in again today. I'm here to help you today with some special tax planning and income planning for retirement. Today we're going to talk about how to use a charitable remainder trust to create more income for you during retirement and give you massive, and I do mean massive, income tax benefits and allow you to help the church or charity of your choice. Let me start by using the same example that I used in my blog post recently that you can see at bradrosley.com. The Jackson family had some appreciated stock. The, uh, the husband had worked for a company for a long time. He had $500,000 in his company stock, for which his cost basis was only $150,000. It wasn't paying much or any dividend whatsoever, and he really didn't want to sell the stock because if he sells the stock, he's got to pay all the capital gains tax. So here's an option of what they can do. They can take the $500,000 and give it to a trust known as a charitable remainder trust. That's what sets the ball in motion. Now, why would they do that? Well, firstly, when the trust gets the money, the Jacksons get a massive income tax deduction. That income tax deduction is something they can use over five years and depending on how much income the trust is going to return to them each year that tax deduction will vary in the case we're going to look at here the trust is going to pay back to the Jacksons 6.5 each year 6.5 percent of 500,000 which is $32,500 a year so let's go over this again. The Jacksons give $500,000 of the company stock to the charity. The charity can then sell the stock. That money can then be repositioned in whatever kind of portfolio you'd like to put it in while it's in the trust name. So it can have a combination of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you name it. Each year, by rule here, the trust is going to pay back to the Jacksons an income. Now they've chosen six and a half percent. The minimum you can choose is five, but you can choose significantly more than that. So they're using six and a half percent. They're going to get $32,500 a year back from them. So they saved, by the way, if they would have sold the stock themselves, they would have had approximately between the capital gains rate of 15 and the extra tax rate on the sales, an 18.8% capital gain. So they saved on 18.8%, they saved roughly 65K, $65,000 in taxes because they didn't sell the stock. So now they have $500,000 working for them generated income rather than 500 less than 65 they would have paid in tax. Huge advantage. Second advantage, as I alerted, alluded to earlier, was they get a massive income tax deduction. Based on $500,000 being gifted, and the fact you're taking 6.5%, and you also factor in their ages, and that that 6.5% six, six or 32.5, whatever 6.5% uh, times the principal balance is, they get a tax deduction, tax deduction of $115,000. It's a lot of tax deduction. They can use that over five years. Literally offsets your income. So that deduction is extremely valuable depending on your tax bracket. It's worth thousands and thousands of tax dollar savings. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now, when this trust money, the $500,000 is invested, it's gonna go up or down in value over the period of time. Over time, the trust may make more than six and a half percent that's paying out or less. It doesn't matter. When both survivors, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, had passed away, they get the income every year until both have passed away. Whatever this balance is goes to the charity. The balance at second death. So you can't outlive that. So why would they do this again? Well, 
they've got $500,000 invested instead of that $500,000 less the tax. Their stock wasn't paying them any income, they want income. $32,000 is a lot of income, that's more than $2,500 a month. Makes a big difference in their retirement. Now they have a diversified portfolio too, where before they had one stock that could get creamed any day. Now they have a diversified look and they feel much more comfortable with that. Their income, the stock was paying them less than nothing, now they're getting 32.5. And of course they've done well, haven't they? For $500,000, whatever six figure account balance they ultimately end up dying with and pass it to the church or charity, that's a significant amount of money. They've made an incredible impact to that organization. And that's a big part of this as well. The last thing I wanna mention was the children. Some people are hesitant to do this because they'd like to give that $500,000, not necessarily to the church or charity, but to their kids. I can see that. What if you could do both? The answer is you can. If you take a portion of this 32.5, that's the annual income. This portion is, in this example, is roughly $7,000 a year. Okay, this was also annual. For $7,000 for this couple in the early to mid 60s, they are gonna buy something called a wealth replacement trust. Okay, what's the wealth replacement trust? Well, believe it or not, it's life insurance. In this case, it's the ultimate tool for wealth replacement. $500,000 is the amount of money that they gave away. And if that's the amount they want to replace, depending on people's health, of course, $7,000 a year, every year, will buy them a half a million dollars of life insurance. The life insurance would be what's also called second to die. It would pay out at the second of the Jackson's death. It's $500,000, and it's also income tax-free. So now the church or charity has gotten that huge principal balance. Your children have gotten $500,000, and you still have this extra income, less than $7,000. Now, if you didn't need any of that income, let's say, for example, I was just going to leave that stock alone, Brad, take the risk because I didn't want to pay the tax, and let it grow and see what, you know, what it may or may not grow to. You can take any portion of this money, 32.5 in that example, and do this wealth trust. It wouldn't be wealth replacement if you're not giving it to the church or charity. So if 700,000 buys you 500, 14,000 would buy you a million, 21 would buy you a million five, et cetera. Now those are estimates, by the way, those are not factual numbers. So in summary here, there's unbelievable retirement income benefits, number one. You have incredible tax saving benefits, both upfront and annually, and you have the full value working for you, the whole $500,000 working for you in this case, not having to subtract the capital gains tax if you were to sell. The charity of your choice gets a massive infusion of money when you and your spouse have passed away. And lastly, if you care and want to replace it to your children, you can do that as well. I know that's a mouthful. If you have questions about this, you definitely need to get an advisor's help. I'm happy to help you as well. I work with accountants. I work with the, the attorneys that write these documents all the time. It's very important that this all be coordinated, although it's really not complicated. You have to decide how much you want to give away, if you want to replace any of the money to your children or not, and what the charity would be that would ultimately get the money and how much income you'd like to have. So you do have a little bit of flexibility, but there's only a few things to factor in. This is outstanding for people who have appreciated assets, especially if you want to generate more income. As I close, I want to make sure that you go ahead and hit like this video if you liked it, and that you subscribe and get future uh, updates on my YouTube channel. And if you have more questions, I've written this out again on my blog page at bradrosley.com. So feel free to to go there as well. Uh, I also help people directly. I'm a certified financial planner. Our company's name is Fortune Financial Group. Go ahead and look that up on the web as well. Thank you so much for listening. 
and have a great day.